Welcome to Alaska Earthquake Science Facts. I'm Carl Tate. A 1946 magnitude 8.6 earthquake in the Aleutian Islands generated a tsunami wave that reached eight meters or 26 feet high in the harbor at Hilo, Hawaii. On Unimak Island in Alaska, the tsunami wave reached 42 meters or 138 feet above sea level and destroyed a US Coast Guard lighthouse. Here's an opening picture of two trees. It says, what does a live tree in Hawaii have in common with a dead tree in the Aleutians here shown on Unimak Island? And we'll see the answer to this. Here's a tree in Hilo Harbor. You see this tree on the left, it's got some signs shown on it. And what the signs show are the height of different tsunamis that have come into this harbor over the last hundred years. First one in 1957 at a height of eight feet. This came from the Aleutians, Alaska, 1957 earthquake, 8.6. Next up at 12 foot marker comes from Kamchatka, Russia, magnitude 9.0 in 1952. All the way up here, 15 feet high wave coming from the magnitude nine earthquake in Chile and way up at the top here, 26 feet was a wave from the Aleutians magnitude 8.6 earthquake in 1946. So the tree provides a measuring stick and provides sort of a frame of reference for imagining what this wave would be like coming into the harbor in Hilo. We don't need an imagination because there are some rare photographs that show this wave. This is coming into Hilo, April 1st, 1946. The caption shown in this photo here, tsunami breaking over pier number one in Hilo Harbor, Hawaii. The man in the foreground became one of the 159 fatalities in the Hawaii islands from the tsunami. So you can see the kind of destruction and wave coming in at the pier and in the aftermath um, shown here in the lower right. Looking much more close to the source of the earthquake, this is Unimak Island, Alaska. And this is showing a Coast Guard lighthouse at Scotch Cap built in 1940. You can see some people for scale down here This structure is made out of reinforced concrete. It looks quite strong and it is 18 meters high or 60 feet tall. So this is the building built in 1940. And to get some idea of the heights involved here, it shows sea level. The base of the building is about 32 feet, 9.8 meters. The top of the building, 92 feet above sea level or 27.8 meters. And what we'll see is that the tsunami wave from this event reached as high as 42 meters above sea level over the top of this. And so as the time shows, the catastrophic wave came in at 219 local time in a moonless night. And this shows the aftermath. The lighthouse is completely destroyed, five men perished. So you can see the before and the after of, of the tsunami wave in 1946. A study, this figures from a study by Emil Okal and others in 2003. This team went to survey, you know, decades after the event to get some more information about what happened um, during this earthquake and tsunami. This shows the 1940, the destruction shown here. The photograph here is taken in 1966. It's annotated with what the field team found. And that is that the maximum run up or the maximum height or elevation that the tsunami reaches way up here at 42 meters or 138 feet above sea level. And we, when we imagine the wave reaching that kind of height, um, we can start to imagine how such a wave could have wiped out um, such a strong lighthouse as if it were made out of Legos. The caption from the published paper describes these locations. Um, 
the circled white building was a radio communication facility flooded by the tsunami whose ruins constitute here. And the dashed line and the black arrows here way up here show the inundation line identified by debris deposited by the tsunami. That's where the maximum run up was 42 meters or 138 feet. So what do we mean by debris in this case? And here's another figure from this paper, a uh, photograph taken in 2001, George Plafker, Emil Okal, Costas Sinalakis, and Plafker is standing on an old tree. And the statement up here at the top is that there are no trees in the Eastern Aleutian Islands. How did a tree get up here? You can see in the background, this is, uh, this is the ocean in the background. So this is on Unimac Island. And as Emil wrote, Large logs lying several hundred meters inland at altitudes of 10 to 30 meters constitute watermarks of inundation by a tsunami since they are way beyond the limit of even the most powerful storm surges. In recent decades, only the 1946 tsunami is a viable candidate as the agent of their deposition. So the inference here is that this debris was deposited by the 1946 tsunami. And interestingly, there doesn't have to be as much speculation because people were around this is uh, Elder Ronald Wilson here from Senec in 2001 explaining to Emil Okal about driftwood that had been deposited by the 1946 tsunami. And from this discussion, Okal and his team were able to fly in, find the remote location, and survey the material. This is showing another figure from the paper showing this logs uh, way out of place from whether it's a small village um, or coming from farther away, this is evidence for the tsunami. I hesitate to complicate this story, but I have to acknowledge what the scientific consensus is, which is that there were two types of tsunamis generated by this one earthquake. One was generated by the displacement of the seafloor from the earthquake. This is sort of the normal tsunami that the seafloor is displaced and all that water propagates across the entire ocean and hits place like Hawaii and other places, California. That's the first one. So Hilo is associated with that process. The second one, the wave that wiped out Scotch Cap and reached 42 meters above sea level, this is inferred to be caused by a submarine landslide caused by shaking from the earthquake. So the earthquake shakes and a large mass of material underwater moves and it's that process that causes um, a large tsunami, in this case directed north towards Scotch Cap. And so as, it, as the opener says here in this paper, this earthquake stands out among other tsunami genic events because it generated both a very high run up near the earthquake source region, Scotch Cap, and a destructive trans-Pacific tsunami, including at Hilo. So a very scientifically interesting event. And so to come back to our opening slide, why does, what does a live tree have in common? Well, both provide markers of tsunamis originating from a magnitude 8.6 earthquake in the Aleutians. The Hawaii one caused by seafloor displacement, the Unimac um, tsunami caused by submarine landslide, both of these originating from an earthquake. Some takeaway topics, tsunamis can cause damage close by, such as the Scotch Cap Lighthouse and far away, such as Hilo, Hawaii. Alaska tsunamis pose a threat to coastal communities around the Pacific Ocean. Most tsunamis are caused by earthquakes. The Aleutian earthquake of April 1st, 1946 generated two types of tsunamis. One was caused by the seafloor displacing a large area of water. This wave propagated across the Pacific Ocean and hit Hawaii, where there was 159 fatalities. The other was caused by a submarine landslide. This wave was directed toward Unimac Island and hit Scotch Cap, causing five fatalities. So thank you for wa watching and stick around for supplemental material. One note here is a reminder that probably on that palm tree, there should be a marker for the 1964 Alaska earthquake, which would put 
three markers out of the five would be coming from the Aleutian Alaska subduction zone. Here are a couple notes just about trying to figure out how high that lighthouse was. Um, there's a still standing lighthouse on Lake Superior that is supposedly a twin to the one that was destroyed on Scotch Cap. And the notes on where our numbers are coming from. Um, this is from a tsunami report by Lander compilation describes the heights and the levels of the base. But as I wrote here, I'm, I'm not convinced that this is authoritative information. Probably there's something in governmental archives on this. And here's one more reference from NOAA photo archives about the base being at 9.8 meters above sea level. That seems to be repeated. But again, there's no original source of information that might confirm that. 